Today's show brought to you in part by GoToMeeting. For a free 30-day trial, use code podcast at gotomeeting.com. You know, for the holidays, you may not want to listen to your mother. You may want to spoil your appetite. More on RV Healthy. Hey, welcome to RV Healthy. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about holidays, specifically Memorial Day coming up. And as I said a little bit earlier, you know, it's good to listen to your mother, but uh, Sylvia, sometimes you just have to make an independent adult decision. That's correct. We're going to share with you a couple of different recipes today that are light and healthy friendly. Okay, so the holidays are really kind of a food situation in that uh, it's a little, you're, it's out, you're out of your routine, it's a special time, you may have guests, you have relatives that have come in from a uh, you know, long distance away or have joined you at the campsite, and so it, there's a tendency to kind of overdo it a little bit. There is a tendency to overdo it, so portion control is extremely important, but also what you eat is, is vitally important. Okay, so you got to keep your goals in mind, but uh, you know, what are some of the techniques that you need to use like the day of? All right, the day of, you need to make sure that you're not starving yourself so that you can have everything you want at that meal at the end of the day. Because it's important to not, it's important to eat snacks, good healthy snacks throughout the day so that you're making better choices when you get to that celebration. Okay, and uh, you, you advise uh, because of the holidays, you want to drink a lot, right? No, because <laughs> of the holidays, you don't want to, you want to drink a lot of water. Okay. Uh, also limit, limit those alcoholic beverages as well and have a glass of water in between each one or even those sugary beverages. Right, right. Now, if you're in a kind of a very social situation where you've been invited to someone else's uh, uh, you know, RV or to someone else's home, uh, how do you manage that? Because you don't actually control what's going to be served. I'm glad you asked that question because every time somebody asks me that, I ask them this question. If you were to be that host or hostess at that party and somebody asked you, can you bring something or can they bring something, would you tell them no? And most of the times people say absolutely not. So always, <laughs> always, always bring a dish for yourself to share, but you know how healthy it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you also talk about kind of the technique of uh, area management uh, during the meal itself. Is that removing yourself from the dessert table or, or what do you mean by that? Well, when you manage the, the table of food, make sure that you're filling your plate first with all the healthy choices. And you can visualize and see which ones are the healthier choices. Because then when you go back, make sure that you're going back for those unhealthier choices. Your plate, um, you won't be as hungry. So you're going to make some better choices and have some smaller portions. Mm -hmm. So so if you uh, make sure you fill up on the, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, vegetable uh, side of things, on the salad side of things, you look down at the plate and the plate's almost full. And so that piece of pie just maybe won't fit. So you might get a little smaller piece of pie. Absolutely. If you do stay in line and go ahead and fill your plate, um, then definitely on those those pieces of pie or the unhealthier choices of even some of the pasta salads and the heavier side dishes. Oh, you have to stay in line, right? You can't like you you have to stay in line. You have to go all the way to the end. <laughs> you can stay in line, or you can go back for those unhealthier choices. And sometimes thinking to yourself, "Do I really want to go back because I'm full now?" You actually don't even go back. So you've avoided all those calories. Yeah. Well, you know, there are a lot of celebrations and a lot of holidays. So let's let's jump into uh, some of the recipes that you, you might recommend to take in as a dish. Okay. One of the recipes that I love is what we call our dill dip blend. And all that I do is I have a blend here that's a dill dip blend that's very, very low in sodium. And what I've put is a half a cup of low fat mayonnaise because I, I prefer the low fat mayonnaise and a half a cup of sour cream and this is fat free sour cream with two teaspoons of the dill dip blend. Mix that up in a real good way. You want to make sure that it's very very uh, mixed very thoroughly and once you mix this up all you do is let it chill 
And then you've got a nice dip that you can actually put on a table with your cherry tomatoes, your baby carrots, your celery, whatever vegetable you like with your dill dip blend. Okay. That's now, a great now, appetizer. Very, very calorie friendly as well. Yeah. Now, if, if my wife would give me that kind of instruction, the first thing I'd do is I'd grab some dill pickles and put them in the blender and then put it in there. Uh, it, that's probably not something that you'd recommend. Well, no, you want to make things quick and easy for you, and I'm not sure if putting dill pickles into a blender would be very quick and easy. <laughs> but this is just a great dill dip blend, but you can make a dill dip blend yourself up and have it prepared for you. And, um, you know, I have some other solutions, but we can talk about those on another. On another right. Episode. Well, my, my, my thought there was that's probably not good from a sodium uh, standpoint. Uh, no, uh, actually, you're right. I wasn't thinking the sodium level, but you are absolutely right. It would not be good as a sodium level. What, what other tasty uh, dishes do you have that are, that are easy to prepare, easy to carry in, uh, and, uh, but still very, very healthy? Well, I love this one, and my husband and I actually make this many, many times because you can put these on the grill or you can put them in the oven. So they're very, very versatile. It takes away from using the normal French fries on a side of your hamburger or chips. And all you do is you take a red potato, just the small little red potatoes, boil them, or you can microwave them, and you take a potato masher and you push it down. Now see if I can do this without. So now you've got a mashed red potato. See if I can show this to you. So you've got a mashed red potato. Can you see what that looks like? Okay, if you hold it just a bit higher, just a bit higher there. Okay, I'm going to try to hold it with my fingers. So, you've got, you've got, <laughs> so it doesn't slide off the plate. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So now what you're doing with this mashed red potato is you're going to baste it with, I love the infused grapeseed oils, but you can actually baste it with olive oil with a basting brush. So you see I'm just putting with a basting right. brush a little bit of oil. Not much, just a little bit. Take a little bit of any kind of seasoning. It can be basil, oregano, whatever seasoning you want on top of that potato. And then a little bit of shredded low-fat cheese because fat-free cheese does not melt. So now look at that. Oh, wow. That is absolutely, uh, absolutely luscious, as they say. Now all you need to do is put it on the grill for about 20 minutes or put it in the oven on 350 for about 20 minutes and it is crispy and it's a great alternative to chips or french fries now, in now, a very healthy way. On the, on the grill, do you, uh, if you have tinfoil underneath it, do you wrap the tinfoil over top of it or do you leave it uh, open just like a burger? I put it actually onto a baking dish a stoneware baking dish or you can put it into a pan and put that on your grill. Okay. Is this and you want to make sure that you put the oil on the bottom of the pan as well because that way that it won't stick to the pan when you bring it off that grill. Okay. If you were in a campfire situation, would you need uh, like a cast iron uh, skillet or something to uh, uh, to cook it in? Skillet. Yes, absolutely. I think that would work wonders. I haven't tried that yet, but I bet it would work really really well. Okay. Hey, what's for dessert? Um, dessert is my favorite because this is the easiest dessert and each slice and this will go pretty much about a twelfth of the cake which is a pretty large slice each slice is less than 200 calories and it is the simplest cake to make all you do is you take a package just the dry part of an angel food cake mix dry so you put that into a dish and you want to make sure, I want to show you how large my dish is. You see how large this bowl is? Because now what you're going to do is you're going to dump a can of crushed pineapple on top and mix it up. So now that you've mixed this up, that's it. There's no other liquids. There's no other added ingredients. You're not putting egg in it. You're not putting any of the um, other required ingredients into that um, angel food cake mix. So I want to show it to you mixed up. And it will, it will kind of grow a little bit, if you will, because the pineapple, once it gets with that angel food cake mix. 
So you're putting this, that's it, into a tube pan and make sure that it is oiled. And we will show you pictures at the end when this is baked. That's it. You bake it just as it calls on the, bot of the back of the box. So it is so simple and less than 200 calories per slice if you slice them in a 1 12th of the cake and put it with a side of light Cool Whip or what we love to do is a side of pineapple sherbet. Oh, wow. Wow. And, and the idea that, that uh, that's something that I could make and, uh, and I'm, you know, not much above boiling water. That's right. It is so <laughs> simple and it tastes just light and fresh and just have that good sweetness to it that it's a wonderful dessert all summer long. I bet that, uh, I was going to ask how long it would keep in the fridge, but I bet it doesn't stay around in the fridge very long. It does not. As a matter of fact, we don't put it into the refrigerator. We actually keep it out um, and covered up, obviously. But I love it to where it just has that little bit of room temperature to it and not the coolness. And you don't need to refrigerate it. Okay. Well, this certainly gives us some ideas on how to deal with uh, e eating healthy uh, on Memorial Day or any other holiday. And, of course, there are a lot of holidays uh, around, around the corner. So, Sylvia, what uh, final summary uh, might, you, might you have before we get into our uh, shameless plugs of uh, Pinterest and, uh, and uh, some of our other activities here? Well, I think just most importantly, as you saw, just how easy and quick that I did three different dishes, one being a, an appetizer, one being a side dish, and one being a dessert. It does not take time at all to learn how to just make some healthier choices. Okay, and healthier choices to uh, head off uh, what could be, uh, could be a diet disaster, and we don't like to talk about those. Exactly. Okay, hey, thanks so much for joining us. Let me go through and remind folks that um, uh, RV Healthy has a, a board on RVNN's uh, Pinterest uh, board. So if you go there, we'll have details on uh, pictures of some of the recipes that we have uh, talked about. And, uh, of course, you can circle us on Google+. Plus. Give us a thumbs up, please, on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter at uh, RV Newsnet. Uh, watch RV Healthy on the Roku. It's now under the travel section of, uh, in the channel uh, directory. Uh, go ahead and just add that to your, uh, to your lineup. Also, you can find us on Boxy uh, as, as well. And don't forget to visit Sylvia at RVHealthy.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on RV Healthy. Hey, Gabe, want to go for a walk? Gabe? 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 Hey, buddy, you lost? Hold on. If your pet is the adventuresome type, be sure he's connected to Pet Hub. A quick scan using any smartphone shares your pet's vital information so that even his wildest escapades have a happy ending. Pet Hub, reuniting pets with their families. Come on, Gabe, let's go home. <laughs>